Burlesque Stripped Down, episode number 28. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Velvet Eau Claire coming at you from the hills of Tennessee. I decided to do something a little bit different today. As you notice, there's not a lot of intro music. Um, this is just kind of going to be a truly stripped down edition. As some of you know, um, my hometown is Orlando, and you have all heard, I am sure, by now of the events that transpired over the weekend in Orlando at Pulse Nightclub, and I just wanted to do a very quick episode to kind of for my own um, peace of mind as well, for my own um, purposes, I guess, to get some of the thoughts out of my head and onto tape, I guess, or onto this audio um, and give some of you a chance to kind of hear where I'm coming from with it. I'm going to try to be fairly brief because I think that there's a lot that's been said that I don't need necessarily to rehash or reiterate. And um, there's been a lot going through my heads over my head, only one head, <laughs> Over the last um, few days, I'm recording this on Wednesday, the day before this will go live. So it is Wednesday, the 15th of June. And of course, the attack took place in the wee hours of the morning on Sunday, the 12th. Um, I had actually just arrived here to Tennessee. It was our first night on our little family vacation, which has been wonderful, despite all of the kind of the the tough um, note that it started on. And um so for me, I was already in bed, actually, when, of course, I think a lot of us were. It was <laughs> at Barclow's time that um, the attack began. Um, and it was interesting because I had actually just, I was just about to fall asleep. It was three in the morning um, here, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. And I literally just opened up my Facebook to check just one last time <laughs> just to see if anything interesting was happening or, you know, I don't know why. Why do we ever open up our Facebook one last time before bed, right? And I can't decide whether I'm glad I did or I wish I hadn't. But um, And it, so I saw something randomly happening. Of course, the night before um, this, this was Saturday night slash early Sunday morning. And of course, the night before we had had already had a, another shooting at um, another venue in Orlando where, um, uh, what's her name? Ke Christy Grimes? Is that her name? Grimms? Um, the singer from The Voice uh, was tragically killed by a gunman as well. Um, so we had already had that, and so I read something about an attack that one of my friends had posted, and when I read it was Pulse, I, I, I shot awake. You know, I was already half asleep, and I kind of shot awake and started looking, and, and basically for the next hour and a half or two hours, I was just on social media because there was nothing, nothing had been um, written about on any news sources yet or anything like that. Um, national or local news was not, had not picked up the story until about 4.30 or 5 in the morning. And so I was literally just refreshing. Um, I, I was going between Facebook and Twitter, basically trying to get any information that I could know what was going on. I didn't know if it was a small shooting or something larger. And um, around 4.30 is when I turned on CNN and CNN finally started at least mentioning it. And um, of course, they weren't saying much because there wasn't much to be said. And I, I just felt so helpless, um, as a lot of us, I think, did just laying there and I couldn't sleep. Finally, I think I fell asleep for about 45 minutes and I remember rolling over and, and opening one eye when I kind of woke back up again. I had left CNN on and at that point I saw the the um, theorized death toll at uh, 20. They they were estimating 20 dead and 42 injured at that point. As we all know, it, it rose significantly in the morning after that. Um, and I just remember I, I felt like I wanted to vomit and just... Ugh, just awful. And so the whole rest of the morning, I, you know, of course, I'm here with my family. It's the first time I've seen some of my family members in quite a few years. And we were trying to enjoy ourselves, but I was just, um, just a wreck that day. I think a lot of us were. The thing is, it hit home for me in a very real way. Um, of course, Orlando is my hometown. I've called it my hometown, even though I've lived in Paris for off and on. Um, Orlando has been my hometown for the better part of 12 years. And I have been to Pulse quite a few times, um, in the, in those years. And so it was just inexplicable, really, how much this affected me and how, how I was trying to come to terms with the fact that this was happening in a place that I knew so well. Um, unfortunately, as Americans, we've gotten kind of used to hearing about some of these 
uh, these mass shootings and, and not just in America, the terrorist um, attacks and other things that are happening throughout the world. Um, they always hit a little bit closer when they are in kind of westernized countries for better or for worse. I know there's a lot of debate about that we should feel just as outraged when it happens in like the Kenya massacre and, and things like that. But, but it does. I mean, we can't help it. It, it hits, it hits us harder when it is closer to home. And this was as close to home as anything I could have imagined. I mean, having been to that club several times, I used to live about five minutes away probably um, from the nightclub itself and drove by it frequently. Um, and so, and as someone who has, I am bisexual myself, so I do, I am a part of that community in Orlando as well. And so one of the big things was dreading that that release of the the victims' names. I was really, really, really dreading it. I guess I can say thankfully, although that feels so horrible to say, but I did not personally recognize any of the names on the list when it was released. But I think as any of us who have ties to the LGBT community in Orlando, or really any anyone in Orlando practically, we know someone who knows someone who was there. And... <sighs> It's it's not been an easy week, I think, for a lot of us. And I have a lot of other feelings, too, of course. You know, it, it, we, there's been an outpouring of support from around the country and around the world of solidarity, particularly due to the fact that it was an LGBT nightclub. And there's a lot of, you know, pride demonstrations and solidarity movements and things like that, which are, which are wonderful to see. That's true. Um, but there's a lot of other messages that are going around as well, which don't always resonate quite as nicely, I guess. Um, one of my frustrations throughout all of this is, is, is that people are seeming to need to put an or statement where it really just needs to be an and statement. For example, people are arguing over whether he was an Islamic terrorist, a radical, obviously radical, um, Islamic terrorist, um, or a homophobe. And clearly there's room for both in that and and whether this was a terrorist attack or a um, hate crime <laughs> clearly there's room for both in there so that's been very frustrating for me to to try to listen to and 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 hear and and almost even debate I'm like I don't want to debate this can we not just let the morning take place first before we launch into all of these uh you know these statements about immigration about deportation about dealing with ISIS about gun control, of course, that's everywhere as well. So that has been hugely disturbing or distressing for me, I guess. And I think for a lot of us, we just want the chance to feel what had ha what happened and kind of come to terms with it. And it's getting harder when you're on social media. So for me, I know I am I'm trying to avoid Facebook, but it's been very hard being, especially being up here in Tennessee, because I'm not connected to my community at the moment. There's been a lot of vigils already that are being held in Orlando. There's been a lot of show solidarity. I've been talking with some friends there and they're seeing, you know, the, I mean, there's stories all over about the, the lines for the blood banks, which is just amazing that people are doing that. And, and just this feeling when you're in the city right now, because people are just mourning together and I'm missing a little bit of that being up here. Um, <laughs> I mean, it could be worse, but then I'm trying to find most of that on Facebook, which is a bit hard because then there's, it's peppered in with a lot of people who are turning this tragic event into their own purposes. And that's something that I don't have respect for or patience for either. I am trying to focus on and see the good that is in all of this. Um, that's something that is a frequent theme after any sort of attack like this. I remember it vividly after September 11th and, of course, all of the terrorist um, uh, attacks that have happened since in Paris, after Brussels and everything like that, um, there is good. You know, there's people that do kindness for others and, and support others, and there's a lot of that. I am finding, though, personally, and in the interest of, you know, me, I, I like to be vulnerable. I like to show more authenticity. It's something I'm struggling with, but I really want to tell you all where I'm really at, which is I feel that each time I hear of one of these shootings, one of these attacks, it's chipping away a little bit more at my ability to focus on the good. It's chipping away at my positivity, my faith in humanity, my outlook for the future, my hope for the future. I, I, I can't help it. I don't want it to. But it is. 
I'm still trying. I'm still trying. And I still see some of the stories and they make me cry happy tears because it reminds me that there are good people and there are people that are trying to help and that are helping. But it's getting harder, I think, for a lot of us. Not only the the act itself to see that someone could have such hatred, and, and I think some self-hatred as well, that, that then they externalized and, and, and took out on other people. So, but not only that, but also the the hatred and the the strife. That's the that's that's a good word for it, I feel. The strife, the continual strife that we have all the time nowadays. Our politics are becoming more polarized. Our our views on things. We can't have civilized discussions anymore because people are just so set in their beliefs that they are unwilling to listen to what the other groups have to say. I don't want to get into the gun control debate, but it's one of those I'm just seeing and it just it, it just eats away at me to see how much people, how angry people are on both sides of this and how unwilling we are to even just listen and try to see things from another point of view. Again, I am not saying anything that has not been said already, and I'm sure that I am not the only one to feel this way, but it's just getting it, getting to me. You know, it's just, it's just getting to me. It's eating away at me every time we have these things happen and to see the numbers, the death tolls rise when we look at the amount of you know shootings in America, as well as terrorism around the world. It's just, it's difficult to get through. So... I'm sorry that this is a super bummer of an episode, but it has been a super bummer of a week. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. And so I hope that if you are listening to this, I hope that we can at least feel a sense of solidarity with each other for what it's worth, I guess. And we try to remind ourselves that there's good. Let's, let's keep on, even though it's getting harder, let's keep on looking for the good in things, shall we? We're going to try. The day after the attacks, um, someone posted on Facebook the um, Lord of the Rings quote um, from near the end of, I think I believe it's from the end of Return of the King, and when Frodo is asking Sam about, I don't know, he's just basically ready to give up when there's so much evil in the world, how do we make it through? And, and Sam responds with, because there's still good in this world, we have to believe that there's still good in this world and that good is worth fighting for. And it's so cliche, but it, when I saw that, I just burst into tears again for the umpteenth time that day. But I have to try. We have to try to keep remembering that. So let's try as, as, as the morning period winds down for us. All I can say is that I, I hope that we can all make a, make a strong effort to approach our debate civilly to think about the other point of views, the other perspectives, to not be so wrapped up in our beliefs, because they're just beliefs. They're not facts, what we have in our heads. They're just thoughts, and they don't define us, and they don't define the world around us either. And so let's just try to remember that and to listen to each other with compassion. Oh, now I feel like I'm going on a <laughs> cliche tirade. I don't know. I don't really know how to end this, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I am, thank you for listening. For those of you who have listened this far, I would love to hear any stories from you about how you're dealing with it. They don't have to be positive. <laughs> Sometimes I think we need to remember that we're not always going to handle things well. Not everybody handles things. We see so many like, like positive messages after this, which is funny. After you have an attack like this, we see so many like positive things. And I think it's important for us to remember that it's it's going to be hard for some of us and we don't have to feel guilty about it, about not, not being optimistic and not, not seeing the good. It's okay if we don't always see the good. It's not a good thing, <laughs> but it's normal and it's human. And so we need to kind of commiserate and, and, and go through this together. So if you have anything to share about your experiences um, from this attack or any other attacks that have hit you home, uh, hit you close to home, um, or if you have some misery to to share with me, that's fine. Or, or some happy stories. I would just love to hear any of it. I think we all need to band together in our community, in our communities now more than ever. So please don't hesitate. Um, send me an email, velvet at burlesque As always, um, you know, you have the, the voicemail that you can do on my website too. Check out, um, you can go to the show notes. I don't know if I'll have much in the show notes, to be honest. Um, but you can check it out on the webpage. It'll be at burlesque slash Orlando. And, 
yeah, I'm thankful to you for listening. I am thankful to you for being an amazing audience for me. And I'm thankful that we can be here to support each other. So try everyone, stay positive, stay optimistic, stay listening, stay flexible, stay kind. And, you know, we all still need to stay sexy. <laughs>